and I went Marine Corps 67. Call meeting to order. Oh, please rise. I ask you to join me in a moment of reflection on the business that's before us this evening. Please join me in a pledge of allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Clerk, please take the roll. Alderman Basso. Here. Alderman Bagley. Here. Alderman Bailey. Here. Alderman Key. Here. Alderman Lewandowski. Here. Alderman Clifford. Here. Alderman McGrogan. Here. Alderman McGovern. Here. Mayor, City Clerk, and Attorney Ellis. All right, fine. Thank you. Uh, no special presentations tonight. Under the consent calendar, we've got uh, two items. The approval of minutes of the City Council meeting from May 18, 2021, along with the approval of the payroll and the voucher list for the period ending May 28, 2021. Second. So, so, uh, Alderman Clifford makes a motion. Second. So, Alderman uh, Bilem seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Pass. Okay. No sealed bids. Uh, under my report, uh, a couple of things. I'd like to say we had a great turnout uh, yesterday for Memorial Day. I mean, I want to thank everyone who, uh, who was there. And uh, it was great seeing the number of people we had and uh, families. And I, I was in a meeting this morning earlier with a number of mayors from the uh, Chicago metropolitan area. And they were all saying how the attendance at all their Memorial Day programs were, you know, and parades were f phenomenal compared to how they've been in the past, especially last year since most of them were canceled. Uh, uh, that in mind, uh, again, the meeting I had this morning was with the Metropolitan Mayor's Caucus uh, COVID Committee, which I serve on. And uh, it looks like uh, the governor was, was supposed to make a, 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 a announcement uh, this week, and I, I saw that later on this, this afternoon he actually made the, uh, the, motion, the uh, announcement that it looks like uh, June 11th will be the uh, end of, uh, we'll start phase five. We'll go back to, uh, to normality of, uh, of some sort. And so uh, uh, so it's been a long time and uh, I'm hoping that, uh, I know we've got a lot of programs that are for scheduled for the for the summer, as uh, Alderman Key mentioned last uh, last meeting, and uh, the, with the lot with the uh, library, the, the pool, uh, you know, the, the parks, the rec center, uh, should all go back to normal, uh, hopefully within a, by a week from uh, week from Friday. So that's uh, something we can all look forward to. Now, we'll still be under the auspices of the CDC's uh, guidance as far as uh, some face masks may be asked to be worn or uh, social distancing, but for the most part, uh, it'll be, you know, just kind of back to where we were. So uh, I want to thank everyone for understanding the last year and a half that we had to go through all this. Uh, you know, obviously it was not something we had any control over, but... Uh, uh, I want to, you know, thank the residents and you, you, you people here for, you know, bearing with us all and, and uh, uh, getting us through this situation. Just uh, if I can cover a couple things, one thing is particularly uh, down in Springfield, uh, there was some concern that uh, under the uh, Governor Pritzker's budget, uh, as you may know, uh, we, we get a, a portion of the state sales tax. You know, uh, historically, when the deal was cut a number of years ago under Governor Ector, uh, we were the cities or municipalities as a whole were to get 10% of the state income tax and uh, over the years when various governors needed money to uh, balance the budget if it does actually balance uh, they would take a portion of that uh, what's called the uh, local government distribution fund and uh, there was some concern that the uh, this initial budget called for us to get a, have a 10% haircut and you only get 90% of our, uh, our allotment but it uh, in the budget that passed uh, uh, late last night, uh, we actually will get 100% of our allotment this year. So uh, and so I know a number of us, and uh, my particularly wrote letters and talked personally, which I did to our state senator and the representatives, and, and lobbied for that, and it, and it did pay off. So uh, uh, that's good to know. We will get all our funding from there. So that's all I have tonight. Uh, city Clerk? No reports. City Treasurer is now with us tonight, City Attorney? No report. Any communications anyone have tonight? Citizens wishing to uh, address the council? Kathy, give your name and address, please. Kathy. Up here? Yes, please. Kathy Lovett, 11936 South 74th Avenue. Um, two points. First is, um, I don't know what area this falls under, but if somebody could please contact IDOT and work on the traffic signals on Route 83 and Southwest Highway. The green light on Southwest Highway is extremely long, and I know it's a heavy trafficked area, but 83 is equally 
as lengthy, if not worse, with traffic. And oftentimes, if there's a semi-truck at the beginning of the line, you might get three or four cars through there. And it's only a single lane under the viaduct anyway. So that light really needs to be extended, because oftentimes traffic is backed up past 76th Avenue. More importantly, I'm here because 22 years ago this past weekend, my dear friend and neighbor Jane Carvey was enjoying an evening bike ride with her then 10-year-old son on the bike paths here in Payless when she looked up to ensure that her son had safely crossed McCarthy Road. And in that split second, her pedal hit the cement barrier in the middle of the bike path in the middle of an open field, rendering her a quadriplegic. Jane was a trained occupational therapist prior to her accident, a cruel twist of fate that she could now be one of her own clients. In spite of her horrendous debilitation, if you ran into Jane, you would always leave feeling uplifted. Without saying a word, just Jane's presence had a way of putting life in perspective. She was known for her laugh and sense of humor and a smile that would light up any room. Only a few of us were ever allowed to see her down times. She just never wanted to dwell on the negative. I'd venture to say that just about everyone in Payless Heights has crossed paths with Jane tooling around in her electric wheelchair with one or both of her dogs in tow and found her to be a true inspiration. But 22 years later, those same barriers are in the same place on those same bike paths in Payless Heights. That type of barrier does not prevent any motorized vehicle from entering that bike path or the open field surrounding it. One look and common sense will tell you these have no purpose being there. Though these bike path barriers may or may not directly fall under the jurisdiction of Payless Heights, even if Commonwealth Edison shoulders sole responsibility, I feel it is also the responsibility and duty of communities to ensure they have the best possible solution to preventing another such tragic accident from occurring. Most quadriplegics' life expectancy is roughly 10 years. Jane beat those odds by living another 12. But last October, with no indication of anything being fatally wrong, my dear friend Jane Carvey died peacefully and painlessly. I am a better person for having known her. Anyone who met her would agree. Instead of planning her upcoming celebration of life ceremony, Jane and I should be planning one of our parties together. Please do the right thing. Please replace the current barriers with something less endangering. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Take a look right. Any other citizens mission to address the council? Yes, sir. Um, hi, I'm uh, Jim Murphy. I'm at 12623 uh, South 75th Avenue. Uh, this is my wife, Kelly. So um, we just wanted to address um, something that's been ongoing. We got a um, official notice violation for uh, a permit required for a building. We didn't build anything. It was just something that we got in the um, in our mailbox. We we never we literally haven't built anything. So I'm I'm not sure why we got that. And that's on top of uh, an ordinance that we got, I guess, about a month or two ago, um, citing us for boisterous music. And this was uh, again um, mailed to us through the regular mail. There was music playing, and they just, they didn't tell us, there was no like, hey, um, uh, turn down your music, you know, what, you know, it was just a, a violation that's going to require me to take a day off of work and go to um, Bridgeview to be in front of a judge or something. And it was not loud, it was boisterous music is what it says, and I don't, I don't know if that, that's, I'm pretty sure that's not, a, there's no law against boisterous music. And it's written by the building commissioner. And these are all written, this is all coming from the building department for the building commissioner. We've been cited for lights that are too bright on our property. We cited for um, a trampoline that was on the side of our yard. And as I drive around Palos Heights, I see trampolines all, literally all over Palos Heights, but we got singled out for it. Um, I, I have since moved it to our, our backyard officially. Um, we've been cited for... Um, uh, a, a pergola we put up that that uh, you know it's just one thing after another from the same building commissioner. Which each hearing it gets thrown out. Yeah, we've we've gone here to, to hearings with the judge um, who, who comes here, and he keeps saying there's there's no violation, everything is fine. So we just want you know if 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 we build something 
we'll get a permit. We always have, we always will. But if we don't, we just don't want to deal with the building department over these kind of things. But I had actually called and spoken to Jan, and she told me that Chris Kranzenberger was at this meeting, specifically on June 1st at 7 p.m. So I guess I'm wondering where he is. This was supposed to be the building and permits committee meeting? No, the city council. Okay, so when is the building and permits meeting? Next week. Next Tuesday at 7. Next okay, Tuesday. so maybe okay. she mistold me the date and time. This needs to be explained. Okay, you can't issue warnings, not knock on the door, not let people know, just drop it in the mail and say, no building permit. That one nail has been, been, been hammered either in my home or outside of my home to warrant this. So we're gonna need an explanation because Kranzenberger can't be walking around dropping citations, mailing things certified, but then never having it actually signed for. Because that's actually not a lawful way of serving someone, either a citation or a warning. If you are violating an ordinance, you need to be notified. If you're given a warning, you need to be told what you're doing is wrong and where it exists. Because okay. as of right now, any of you are welcome to come to my home and see that not one nail has been laid, not one ounce of building has happened, and yet we actually are being accused of a violation. Okay. Okay, this is this is harassment is what this is. Okay. And this is not the first time I've been here to discuss it with you all. It needs to stop. Okay. Well, I'll look into that and, and uh, if you'd like to come next Tuesday at 7, that would be fine. Yes, I definitely Thanks. would. In fact, Jan did um, tell me to make sure that that gets on the agenda because otherwise the meeting could be canceled. Okay. So I just want to make sure because I will be here. Okay. okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Any other citizens? All right, Finance Committee, Alderman McGrogan. Mr. Mayor, no report this evening. All right, Public <coughs> Safety, Alderman Basso. Yes, Mayor. Um, I chaired the, my first meeting of Public Safety last week, and uh, it, it was most interesting as I have not uh, heard those reports in some time face to face. Uh, but I don't have any report this evening. <laughs> So it wasn't that interesting, right? <laughs> All right, municipal grounds and property. <laughs> I have a very brief report. Right, thank um, you. Mayor Strauss, thanks for uh, indulging me. I, I too chaired my first report, or, or my first um, committee meeting since I took position as alderman. I just wanted to quickly take this time to wish the 2020 graduate, 2021 graduates in Palos Heights a very um, Heartfelt congratulations from all of us, because I think that's something that the 2021 graduates have had a little bit difficult time this year. <laughs> Definitely. Um, I, I, I don't have any, mo any motions or anything of that nature, but I did just want to comment that I was fortunate to be joined by seven of the eight aldermen at my first committee, which I thought was most unusual, but I was um, happy to have that participation. Um, we have a few things that we um, have proposed for the city, and I just wanted to kind of get that out on the record, make this a transparent process. Um, we have a we had a resident query regarding landscaping and maintenance at the entrances to and within Navajo Hills subdivision, and uh, the building department or the um, the um, Adam is, is addressing that. With, he's going to do some um, grass landscaping and also take care of some of the tree maintenance in, in around Navajo. So I did want the residents to, to be aware of that. So that's kind of the main um, thing that we addressed and we actually accomplished. We faced some opposition on some of the other ideas, but we'll be continuing to discuss those. Great. So thanks, Mayor. All right, thank you very much. All right, Ms. Uh, see Planning Zoning, Alderman the Governor. No report, Mr. Mayor. Recreation, Alderman Key. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the pool does open this Friday, the 5th. And uh, you do have to call for reservations. Um, there are, I think, three different times that you can uh, call in for. Um, the pool is all set to go. It looks beautiful. I was driving by there today. All the um, chase lounges and things are set up. Everything's clean. The water looks beautiful. It's such a gorgeous day today. It was like very inviting. So we're all set to go. Uh, our first concert in the park is on the 10th. Uh, Feel Good Party Band, which is a cover band, they, they do hits from the past and up till today. And then um, Movie in the Park is on the 17th, uh, Trolls World Tour, and both of those events, both the concert in the park and the movie in the park, will both be at Memorial Park. And that concludes my report, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Key. Roads of Construction, Alderman Clifford. I have no formal report except a little announcement that ongoing construction on 123rd Street with the updated FAU route. Currently, NIGAS is installing uh, gas mains. 
so there'll be some disruption in the travel going east and west. Some streets will be blocked off going north and south to be accessible. That will be followed up by then the city installing new water mains, which then will be followed with construction of the street itself and, uh, from 76th Avenue to Harlem Avenue. So this summer, probably to at least October, is going to be pretty iffy. Uh, so if you can find an alternative route to get around or back to your house, I'd advise it. Very good suggestion, I would think. Yes. Uh, it's 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 right now it's, it's going to be a major thing, and you put that with Harlem Avenue mm -hmm. going on with the bridge till October, and the repaving and the ADA accessibility on the sidewalks. So this summer is going to be a a challenge to say the least. In, in fall, it's going to be look, look beautiful. Right? Winter, fall, and construction. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Vice <laughs> right. permits and franchise. Well, Lewandowski. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have no items on the agenda this evening, but I do want to remind the residents that uh, vehicle stickers are currently on sale. Um, you can purchase those vehicle stickers. Uh, I received my notice in the mail. You can. Uh, put a check in the mail, you can go online, and you can also come to City Hall um, to purchase your vehicle stickers. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Very good. Water and sewer, Alvin Violet. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to approve the hiring of Giant Maintenance and Restoration to paint 200 fire hydrants throughout the city in the amount of $16,600. Move Alvin Violet, is there a second? Second. S second, Alvin. I got a question. Yes. Okay. Then I, the, McKee, the, you know, the only question I really have is, are these all the fire hydrants in, in Payless Heights? No. They're not? No, what we're doing a, a portion of them. And actually, we've never uh, hired a company to do it before. Um, Adam um, and probably Scott before him have used, like, college students. And, you know, some are, okay. some are helped to do I this. But he seems to think that other towns, including Payless Park, uh, they do this, and it, it's more efficient, and it doesn't cost a whole a whole lot more. Okay. So we're doing a portion of the hydrants as kind of an experiment to see how it how it goes, how the hydrants look, um, and uh, then we'll see going forward whether we want to follow this up next year. That's what I was going to ask you. Is there is there going to be a follow up next year? If if we're happy with the way it turns out okay. this year, and yeah. Those fire hydrants because, yeah. Oak Hills is private private property, but the fire hydrants are part of the water system. So will the fire hydrants in Oak Hills be a part of the painting job should the second phase come in? Yes. Okay, thank you. Any uh, other questions? Just yes, one, one question on it. It's also part of the procedure now, what I was reading. They'll be totally stripped down and reprimed and redone. They will. Yeah. It's a total, it's be, a total process. They're going to be sand, the Yeah, they're going to be sandblasted. I mean, there was some confused people asked me. It's a lot for just painting, but <laughs> there's stripping and get, right. priming and yeah, yeah prep, there, a lot of prep work involved too. Right, and this is a it's a separate like all uh, one third of our hydrants are inspected and repaired as necessary every every year. It, every three years we rotate our hydrants. This is a separate project, the uh, the painting, and and uh, or the repainting and the refinishing, I guess, of the hydrants. But apparently, I mean, it's an ongoing thing. We do we do it all the time. It's just that we use kits, and so we yeah. we've never had to approve it. But this time, um, Adam wanted to try it this way because because other to other towns, including Payless <coughs> Park, have had good luck with these couple of companies that do this. And probably when the, the summer help does it, they probably just paint the hydrants. As well, they, they to do. Stripping they do. And, and so what happens is that the paint, paint the, yeah, the, the paint builds up. Yeah, the paint builds up, and then it just makes it tougher when, it, when you actually need the hydrant. This way it'll be done professionally, and it'll be done correctly. Right. Alderman Dusky? Alderman Clifford uh, stole my question <laughs> there, <laughs> but uh, to, to the fact that it's going to be a more permanent solution rather than just on a yearly basis, just painting over a problem. And no, another thing, it, it's a very reasonable price. I mean, where, where I live, you know, we, we hire a company to come in and do the dr dryer vents. I think we, we pay $80 for a, to get the lint out of a dryer vent, and they're going to do these fire hydrants and strip them down and then paint, clean them and paint them. And so really for the same price, it's a, it's a very good deal. Call me next time. I'll do it for 75. <laughs> <laughs> you got to strip them, though. You can't just paint them. 
Mike will do it for free. Yeah, we license and violate, right. sir. Any other questions? <laughs> Roll call. Alderman Violet. Yes. Yeah, cost me Alderman yeah. Bagley. Alderman Bagley. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yes, I. Alderman Basso. Aye. Alderman Lewandowski. Aye. Alderman Key. Yes. Alderman McGrogan. Yes. Alderman McGovern. Yes. Alderman Clifford. Aye. I move to uh, approve awarding the 123rd Street Water Main Project to Lindahl Brothers in the amount of $117,667.60. This was the low bid uh, that was opened at the last City Council meeting. One second. Moved by Alderman Violet, second by Alderman McGrogan. Discussion? Roll call. Alderman Key. Yes. Alderman Lewandowski. Aye. Alderman McGrogan. Yes. Alderman Clifford. Aye. Alderman McGovern. Yes. Alderman Violet. Yes. Alderman Bagley. Yes. Alderman Basso. Aye. I move to approve the completion of a sewer repair in front of 6601 West 127th Street with Suburban General Construction in the amount of $13,385. Move by Alderman Violet. Second. Second by Alderman Key. Is it, this is in front of Rex Center? Yeah. Okay. Discussion? Roll call. Alderman Lewandowski. Aye. Alderman Begley. Yes. Alderman Violet. Yes. Alderman Basso. Aye. Alderman Key. Yes. Alderman Clifford. Aye. Alderman McGovern. Yes. Alderman McGrogan. Yes. And finally, I move to approve payment to RJN Group for professional engineering services in the month of April in the amount of $5,507.50. Move by Alderman Violet. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alderman Key. Discussion? Roll call. Alderman Key. Yes. Alderman McGrogan. Yes. Alderman McGovern. Yes. Alderman Clifford. Aye. Alderman Violet. Yes. Alderman Basso. Aye. Alderman Beck. Yes. Alderman Lewandowski. Aye. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Mayor. Business and Economic Development, Alderman Key. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, don't forget that every Wednesday morning, uh, the farmer's market is in the municipal parking lot. Please come out and, and try that if you've never been there. And um, also, um, I would highly recommend people if uh, that have not visited our website lately um, you really should do so you know we if you if you go to our website um, let me just hold this up for our camera the top banner going across the top is it says government or city services our community in our community it's got um, a community calendar events that are happening uh, the, there's a business directory under the business if you go to how do I you can sign up for our monthly newsletter, and that's important because everything that's happening in town, whether it's with the rec department, whether it's the city, Trinity Christian, um, the hospital, our library, it's all sent to you. Hold it, hold it up again. Yeah. Hold it up for the camera. Oh, I'm sorry. <coughs> You're on. It's hard to read. So all the different events happen in town at all these different entities, not, not just for the city, but the library and Lake Catherine and all these other things. So, you know, sign up for that newsletter. It's, it's every month you'll get um, a notification from the city. Um, you can also go to um, Facebook and other social media platforms. Um, the city, the rec department, the library, Lake Catherine, they all put feeds on uh, social media that's another way that you can get um, get to know what activities are happening week to week and month to month and uh, so I just I want to recommend everyone try that if you haven't up till now and that concludes my report I think you make a very good point I mean uh, Alderman Begley mentioned it earlier about transparency in the committee meeting and uh, uh, I think if, if nothing else through the website through uh, Facebook you know Instagram uh, a number of social media things you know We've got a lot of information out there, and more than we've ever had before, along with Channel 4, which we'll be talking about yes. in a minute. And uh, I think the idea is to get information out to the residents. So, you know, when people say they don't know something's happening, there's a way to find it, you know, and I'm, I'm not saying that you, you can't. Just do a little digging, and, you know, the first place to go would be our city website. And go yeah. from there. And, and if you have trouble um, navigating it in any way, shape, or form, call City Hall and someone will be able to help you yeah, do that. The idea is to get the information out because it doesn't do us any good unless, you, unless the residents know about it, and that's what it's all about. So, Thank you. All right, thank you, sir. Uh, Channel 4? Okay, four. first thing I want to do is wish you a happy birthday. Thank you. Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. 
Happy birthday, dear Robin. <laughs> Happy birthday, birthday to you. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> I won't tell him your age. Right. in the cake. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, okay, the second part I want to say. Memorial Day was a, s a sensational day for, the, for, for us. Our camera crew, for the first time, went live outside the building. It was a first, and it went wonderful, okay? Uh, they really put the, Ron and Carl put together a program. They got that microphone up. They got here at eight o'clock in the morning to turn around and start this whole thing out to make sure every, every piece of it worked out perfect. And they did a nice job. And somewhere behind are you guys, congratulations. <laughs> Jeez, I'm glad you finally listened to me. Yeah, right. <laughs> there is somebody behind that wall. Okay. <laughs> so, but yeah, so this is something that they've been working on for a, a, quite a long time, and they just finally got it put together, and they got it put together right, and now it's forever and ever. So, if you want to live broadcast your birthday party later on tonight or something, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the end. That's right. the end of my report. All right, thank Maybe you. Come out and give him a hand. All right. <laughs> All right, any old business? Citizens wishing to ask count questions? No one's here. Any new business? Yeah, just a couple sure. of comments. Sure. Uh, what Jerry was saying uh, it was very nice at Fair Memorial Days, especially after the, the lag in between. Um, and it, I was talking to Commander, and he was asking to put the word out if any veterans would like to be part of the Honor Guard or the Rifle Squad at the mm. time. The flowers. We didn't have one this year. No, that's true. Okay. But, but if anyone's interested, to let us know. And then, uh, Actually, I'm the last one, probably the last one that ever used an M1 anyway. Yeah. So. Jerry will train them <laughs> in the use of M16 <laughs> or an M14. But, uh, and the other thing is, is uh, <clears throat> and the, the comment Mrs. Lovett made on the bike bed, it does have some merit on those things, the block there. And it did cost the city quite a bit, you know, money in a settlement in there. And I never did fully understand the purpose of them if they don't restrict the car. But I also understand that it's ComEd's responsibility. So I may bring that up at uh, Roads and Construction to look at that to see if there is a real feasibility on that. That'd be great. So it doesn't happen to anybody else. Because I said a long time ago, what would it be? A way of installing a solar LED light or something on top of the blink. At least you could see that at night and be aware of it, you know. So I would like. In that light, you may want to look in the refresher memory with some of the information that's before some of our times. But uh, there, I'm, just, I'm sure there's a file on it, you know, some what was right. done after the yeah, fact. And I hate to see some child or whatever happened so to, just, you know, once done, not twice. But and the other thing is, I hate to see Buddy go take a rap. If it's my usual thing. Um, <clears throat> and in this particular case, it's our building commissioner. So you know that warning tickets are usually issued, not in a personal manner, but they're given a citation, put in your mailbox, stating what that citation's for. It's by law, you have to give X amount of warnings, and then after that, a ticket is issued where you go to our, our court, and they'll make a finding thereupon. Usually it's based on some type of violation or finding that he is against our codes or was not done properly. So in fairness to him, that the warning is not her <clears throat> it's not an harassment it's more of a procedure so people know that nobody is being harassed in this city as far as that goes and believe me if there was some any harassment going on i'd be know about it and i would put a stop to it and uh he does a fine job here so i just want to clear the air with that one to be going on and those are the only two points right. i wanted to make right. thank Hello. you new business if I could just follow, if I could just follow up on that, uh, I agree with you. And we treat every citizen the same. You know, everybody's got to get permits. Um, everybody could could face a, the, a citation, but the citation is to compel compliance. It's not punitive. It's just to get you in compliance with right. with the uh, exactly. city code. Exactly. All right. Entertain a motion to adjourn. Then. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.